Hi, it's Jo from Minerva. Today I'm going to show you some skills for making a circle skirt. Circle skirts are great if you're a beginner because there are only two main pattern pieces. There is the skirt piece that's cut on the fold and a waistband. You will need uh, quite a firm fabric to make a circle skirt, but the good thing about making them is that you can use a cotton, a linen, a denim, a chambray, a tweed, a suiting. There's lots of different fabrics that you can choose to get the drape of circle skirt that you really want to wear. The pattern I'm using today is a vintage pattern. So I'm going to make this circle skirt here just to show you some of the skills. But if you're looking for a circle skirt pattern, um, we stock the um, Charm Pattern Stanic Circle Skirt. It's got some extra features on it. It's got pockets, so it's really nice and full. It's also quite a versatile pattern because um, there's a pencil skirt as well that's lined if you really want to stretch your tailoring skills. I'm using a denim fabric today to make an autumn um, circle skirt. It's heavy but not stiff, so it will be a warm winter skirt. Um, it's quite a good colour on the inside, not too white, so if you see inside the circle skirt it's not really white inside. And it's got a nice sort of texture of denim and some waistband interfacing to make the waistband comfortable and a little zip to go on the side today i'm going to show you how to make a lap zip which is not necessary for a circle skirt but i have shown tutorials on invisible zips and dress zips so i thought i'd show a lap zip for this you'll get a real vintage feel to your skirt if you can do a lapped zip. There's one key thing to think about before you order your products for making a circle skirt and that is that your fabric is wide enough because you can't rearrange pattern pieces for a circle skirt. You've got one circle skirt piece and it needs to fit on the fold on the fabric. So this fabric is 145 centimetres wide or 57 inches and it's um, a good weight as I said it's 290 grams per square meter um, you will need to pre-wash it because denims that have this sort of indigo dye in can sometimes um, bleed a little bit or rub off on surfaces so you need to make sure that you pre-wash your fabric so that you've got an item afterwards that's got um, its dye fixed another key feature of choosing fabric for a circle skirt is to choose a fabric that hasn't got a very pronounced print particularly a directional print so if you see a fabric that's got um, I don't know like Russian dolls on it or something because your circle skirt is cut on the fold and turns 90 degrees then your um, design features on the fabric will start to tip and flip upside down so you might get a slightly strange um, dimension to the fabric pattern so that's one of the reasons I'm making a plain one but that's not to say that you can't make a patterned one but you need to be looking for something with quite a ditzy print or something quite small you can make them with stripes but you need to be quite experienced to do that because you need to be able to match up your side seams with your stripes coming at different angles so just be careful which fabric you choose to make a circle skirt all the products that I've mentioned the cotton the zip the fabric the patterns are all listed below If you're learning about different fabrics today I am wearing a, a blouse made with a really light cotton dobby and a cotton dobby has um, an embroidery running through the fabric it's some slightly raised and um, it gives a really good texture it's got a sort of um, antique feel to it it's not totally opaque but it's fine for a blouse and you can get different patterns the circle ones, there's these ones, it's really beautiful fabric. It's great for making blouses because you get that really traditional blouse. I've gone for the larger collar at the moment. The larger collars are all around on shirts and just plain white buttons as well.
before we get the pattern pieces out, it's really, really important with a circle skirt to find the grain line, because if you haven't got the grain line, then your skirt fall won't be really beautiful. It will, will hang a little bit lower on one side than another. I folded my fabric in half and matched the selvage edges, but a, a little thing for you to look out for is that over here, when I fold it in half, it, it's too ripply and that means that I haven't got the straight grain along here. So I'm going to keep moving my fabric until I get no wrinkles across that fold line and that means I've found the grain. So I've done a little folding, holding it up and hanging it to see if I've got that fold line nice and smooth. So I have it there with none of those directional ripples and you can see the cut line on the end, that's how much I had to adjust it by to get that back edge of fold smooth. So don't line up the haberdasher's cut end um, because that's coming off a bolt and although the cutter is cutting it straight, um, when you find the grain line you will lose a little bit of fabric sometimes and sometimes not. So there, if I join these up, I wouldn't have had a straight edge across the back but now I've concentrated on getting my grain straight on the fold line so now I can place my pattern pieces at the cutting table I'm going to cut out two circle skirt pieces on the fold and I'm also going to cut out a waistband piece on the fold I'm all cut out, just prepared my machine, so I've put the navy, gutterman thread in and I'm going to change my needle to a jeans needle. This one comes in 100 or 90, 90 is the slimmer, 100 is for thicker fabrics. So I'm going to try 90, do a little test strip, see if I'm getting a good stitch. And then it's time for me to finish the edges of my circle skirt because a lot of it is cut on the grain and a lot of it is cut against the grain so we'll get some stretching out and some movement of the weave in the fabrics. How you finish the two side seams of a circle skirt is quite important because there's a chance because of its um, wide hem nature that you might see up inside the skirt if you sat down and the skirt draped behind the back of your knees so you need to make sure that you take a bit of consideration about how you're going to finish these side seams because they might show uh, depending on what you're doing. So you can overlock the edge with a matching thread. You can, if you don't have an overlocker, you can just do a single turn and zigzag or straight stitch. But I've got some bias binding here, so I'm going to really carefully Hong Kong seam the side seams of my skirt so if it shows the edges are all bound I'm doing it without pinning it I'm doing it in one pass which means I need to go really slowly because I want to make sure that I catch the bias and the fabric as I make the one pass but it gives a really neat finish to my seam so I'm going to do that on all the sides of the circle skirt. The edges are bound, it's time to sew the side seams. The great thing about making a circle skirt is you've virtually got a skirt by just sewing the side seams so this side's done, this side is done with an opening left for the zip. To add a lapped zipper, you want the smallest zip flap to be on the back piece. That's what this pin is marking. And you're gonna have your larger flap 
of the lapped zipper, the lapped piece to be the front. So on the back seam allowance, I'm going to turn under 1.3 of our 1.5 seam allowance. I'm still working on the back of the garment, but this time with the right side up. I am going to put the zip underneath that 1.3 seam allowance that I've just pressed and I'm going to make the fold line up with the teeth of the zipper and then pin it into place. I'm using orange pins to show me that I'm working on the back so that I make sure I get my lap in the right place. And then I'm going to put my zipper foot on and so really, really close to this fold line that I made. This is the small side of the zipper put in. So this is the back of the fabric. This is the zipper. This is the front of the fabric. And now we're going to make a fold that covers over the zip. And then this will be a little flap. And I'll show you that side next. To do the other side of the zip, you now want to fold the lapped side over by 1.5, your regular seam allowance, because you made the seam allowance on that side a little bit smaller. So it will hide underneath it. And then this one, because it's a little bit bigger, will lap over the top. the right side we're now going to use this fold line and make sure it just covers the stitch line that we attached the first zip seam to and we're going to pin that all the way down and when we sew we're going to sew through both layers of the skirt and through the zipper tape and then we're going to make a little L shape at the bottom because we need to make sure that where the zip meets the side seam, we get a really smooth finish. For this lapped side of the zip, I am going to tack that in place because I want to make sure that I'm catching everything and getting a really straight line of stitching. I've made sure I've got the end flat. I'm going to sew a little L shape along there and then I'm going to sew along there. I can do with tacking, I can check that I'm going to be hitting the zipper tape and I can also see that it's about the same distance as I had on the other side. Back to the zipper foot and I'm going to sew that in. This is the front of the skirt. So from the front you see a nice flat edge and that laps at the back. Now we're going to do something a little bit unusual because the next part of the skirt is to put the waistband on which we can do um, by just sewing it on and folding it under but I want to show you what to do with a curved circular hem and I can't show you now because I'm going to hang this skirt for 24 hours and see what happens to the hemline because where I've got um, fabric cut on the bias that fabric will drop out a little bit. So I'm going to hang it up on a clipped hanger and I'm going to come back to it tomorrow. The skirt has been hanging for 24 hours and this denim hasn't dropped much. So we've still got the same length here as we have in the middle. So here, and here but you might find if you're making a skirt with something light like a lawn or a viscose in in different places it will drop down so you'll start to get a bit of an uneven hem so if you do get that then you'll need to measure from the put it on and measure from the floor up to the skirt or measure from the waist down and then recut carefully now it's time to hem your skirt and there's a few considerations when you've got a circular hem. So we'll go through some of the different ways that you can hem a circular skirt.
Now we're going to hem our skirt and if you've got a lightweight fabric like a cotton lawn or a poplin or a viscose you can do a narrow hem and in that case you will turn a very narrow hem over and sew it along the machine and then you will turn it again and sew on top of that line so you'll get one side of stitching on the right side and two lines of stitching on the back depending on how close you get it on top of your first line and that way you've not taken a wider circumference of fabric and tried to fit it into a smaller circumference of skirt so if you can get a narrow one that works great for a summer skirt it also works well if you've got a very long skirt so you've got a calf length skirt because you can't really see the, the hem is too low down for you to be looking at it that's not great if you've got a knee length um, circular skirt or something in a thicker fabric so I'm going to show you another method I'm going to put gathering stitches in one half then start again and put gathering stitches in the other because there's quite a run of risk that when I pull the gathering threads it's such a large length of gathering that I could snap my thread so I'm going to do it in two halves so I can gather half the skirt and then ease in the other half of skirt so inside that overlap edge is a gathering stitch and now I'm going to start to gather some of the fabric but not like a gather if you were making uh, a puff sleeve you just want a very very tiny amount that you're easing the skirt round so you can see it really is just a tiny tiny bit and you keep moving it along and depending on how deep your hem is is how much you'll need to gather so let me just give you an example and I can fiddle with it to get it all in so you'll be getting a really smooth hem you'll need to keep measuring it with your seam gauge to make sure that you're getting the same hem all the way round otherwise hanging it for 24 hours was a waste of time if you're not going to and I'm going to just move some of these gathers along these easing stitches and this is the technique for making a circle skirt and then it really is up to you what sort of style hemming finish that you want you can hand sew this so that you get a completely flat end or you can top stitch so that you get a stitch line showing on the other side so that's your choice to hand stitch or to machine stitch but you keep easing these stitch these gathering stitches round to keep getting that curved shape and measuring your two centimeters i'll carry on with that I'm choosing to hand sew mine because um, the denim is quite thick so I don't really want a top stitch but if I'd done some red top stitching all the way around I might top stitch the hem so I have got a thread attached and I'm going to pick up a few threads from the skirt and then I'm going to up the hem and pick up a few threads from the skirt and then pick up the hem and I'll get us on the inside I'll get a sort of whip stitch but from the outside I shouldn't be able to see anything maybe just a few little dimples and then I'm going to press the hem and I've got the button left to do. I've hand sewn the hem and you can see where these little ripples are is where we've taken up the slack of the skirt and then from the right side because I hand sewed it you can just see some little dimples where I picked up a stitch but when I press that then that will have a really crisp edge.
Okay, here's the skirt finished. You can see the full circle. You get a good swish on the bottom. Got a really level hem. You can see it's got a, quite a wide waistband and there's the lap zip. So the lap comes from the front over and then the zip is behind. It's got two buttons on. You've got that fullness in the back. Really happy with my skirt. If you would like to use some of the techniques that I've shown today, you could try that with the charm pattern stanic skirt, where you can practice getting that circular hem with the full swish on the bottom. And the fabric that I've used is listed below. Don't forget you can join our Minerva Club and have discounts throughout the year and we'd also love you to make a profile on Minerva and share your makes. If you make a circle skirt don't forget to use the hashtag circle skirt and we can search for those easily when people are looking for a circle skirt pattern or choice of fabric. Thanks very much for watching, see you again soon.